Hi, I'm Mike Lacona. I'm in Berkeley, California, and they're wrapping up the uh, uh, Evangelical Philosophical Society Apologetics Conference. And I'm with uh, a dear friend of mine, Paul Copan, who is a professor of philosophy at West Palm Beach University, and he is the current president of the Evangelical Philosophical Society. And Paul has become somewhat of the go-to guy when it comes to um, the atrocities that are often cited within the Old Testament. So, Paul, thanks for uh, allowing us to videotape you. Sure, no problem. Glad to glad to be here. All right, give me a like a real quick answer here, <laughs> real quick. Yeah, but if if someone brought up, you know, what about all the genocide in the Old Testament? What would what would you say? Uh, well, for one thing, it's not ethnically directed. Uh, the same sort of language that is used of the Canaanites is also used uh, of the Israelites and, and other nations that are living in rebellion against God and, and, and doing all sorts of uh, atrocious things. So the sorts of language, this kind of language that is being applied to the Canaanites should not be understood in sort of, sort of an ethno, uh, you know, a xenophobic uh, or ho you know, ethnically hostile way, but rather it's directed toward any kind of disobedience to God that becomes so corrupted and destructive uh, of uh, not only the culture itself, but other, but having, but also having an influence on cultures outside of that culture. Uh, secondly, God waits for the sin of the Canaanites to be filled up. Genesis 15:16. So the time in, during the time of Abraham is not right for judgment. That comes 400 years later. Uh, you also have mention of the language of driving out the Canaanites, uh, which if you're dispossessing or driving out the Canaanites, then you don't actually kill Canaanites. Uh, Adam and Eve were driven out of the garden. Uh, Cain was driven out uh, from where he had been. Uh, the same language that is used there, those the same. It's applied to the Israelites driving out the Canaanites. Uh, you also have uh, you know, parallel to or next to passages that talk about people being obliterated. Uh, you also have language of lots of survivors. Read Judges 1 and 2. Uh, so if Joshua has done all that Moses commanded, uh, which is repeated throughout Joshua, but yet we see throughout the book of Joshua, uh, you know, survivors. In fact, in, 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 in one portion in Joshua chapter 8, I believe, uh, there are foreigners who are with the Israelites during the reading of the law by Joshua. And these are, as scholars would concur, uh, these are Canaanites themselves who are interested in the worship of Yahweh. Uh, so you have that. You also have archaeological uh, indicators that this was not some sort of a massive military assault, uh, but rather hitting places like Jericho and I and so forth, which were more like fortresses or citadels uh, where, where the, and the civilian population was elsewhere. This was the first line of defense. So you don't have actually the, uh, you know, the um, you know, you know, people of the general populace living in these cities themselves. Uh, furthermore, you have the, the exaggerated language that is quite common in the ancient Near East, uh, language of utterly destroying, utterly decimating, obliterating, etc. You could have a narrow victory in the ancient Near East, and it would be said that everything, there, everything was you know, obliterated, there's no survivor left. Uh, even though there are tons of survivors, for, for, for instance, one Moabite king wrote, Israel is no more. Uh, well, Moab actually is no more. Uh, that was certainly not true. And it's also interesting that it, true, it wasn't true in a literal sense. Also, you have in, in Jeremiah 25, 9, you have the term that is used for utterly destroy. It is used of the people of Judah, that when Babylon comes in, God said he is going to utterly destroy Judah. Uh, he's going to leave their towns in everlasting ruin. Did that literally happen? No, it did not. Uh, we see the urban elite going off from Jerusalem to Babylon, but we see the rest of the population that wasn't killed in, you know, basically when ba the Babylonians came in and, and disarmed uh, and, and rendered and affected the Israelite, uh, the Judah, Judahite armies. Those people stay in the land. There are lots of people left behind. Did God literally utterly destroy them? No, but that's precisely the point. This language should not be taken uh, in, in the strict literalistic sense, but rather in a hyperbolized sense, which would have been readily understood uh, during the time of Moses and Joshua. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate your input on this. Uh, for more on this, see Paul's book, Is God a Moral Monster?